Max and uh, I'd like to thank the organisers for this opportunity. So as Max has said, TAVI or surgery for prostatic valve failure was the title of the talk uh, to present today. So my talk's just going to give a bit of background about biological valve implant rate, rate of TAVI, and then the definitions that we need to be aware of for prosthetic valve dysfunction, uh, and then specifically focusing on structural valve deterioration and treatment options for this, mainly redo aortic valve surgery and TAVI valve in valve procedure, a comparison of these two treatment techniques, recommendations, and a summary. So background, as we know, over the last 20 years, there's been a, a worldwide trend change in prosthetic valve implants, as we've heard this morning. Mechanical valves have plummeted and biological valves have exponentially taken off. This data is old. It's from 2009, <laughs> showing, however, the trend change in the decade 1997 up to 2006 in America. Therefore, there's a huge proportion of patients out there with biological valves that will inevitably undergo structural valve deterioration and treatment options for this are not entirely clear. These patients will be older than when they had their first procedure. They will inevitably have some comorbidities, some of which will be too severe to enable them to undergo redo surgery. So transcatheter valve in valve procedures were, emerged on the horizon in 2007. And this was perceived to be a less invasive option for, redo, uh, for these patients compared to redo surgery. However, it's still a debate. In Germany, 89% of all aortic prostheses recorded in 2016, and now it's in increased beyond this, as we heard this morning, are biological valves. Uh, several factors that have been attributed to this are that are we, putting in patient, are we operating on patients that are older initially because rheumatic valve disease has gone down and it's, and it's degenerative aortic stenosis that we're operating on. However, this cannot be explained entirely. There is a trend to, uh, to believe that biological prostheses have extended durability. Novel surgical bioprostheses, the, the concept that uh, lifelong anticoagulation is bad for patients, particularly elderly, frail patients, um, and a commitment uh, uh, for the rest of their lives on warfarin is something that is turning patients off. And then the av availability of these transcatheter techniques to deal with subsequent structural degeneration and financial drivers. So this, this paper looked at surgical AVR versus TAVI, first-time implants, and all it, I wanted to highlight to you was the, the actual decline in surgical AVR that's been done in Germany. So over the years 2007 to 2013, there's a total decrease in the number of surgical AVRs that are done. The number of biological prostheses as a percentage has gone up, and as you can see, exponentially, TAVI procedures. So just breaking down that uh, information, the, the paper uh, at the bottom there from New England Journal of Medicine broke it down by age group. And then just to highlight that uh, in this category here, uh, between what we would consider fairly youngish patients for aortic stenosis in Germany, they're no longer having operations. They're all having TAVIs. Um, however, UK data is a bit more optimistic. So surgery for aortic valve disease still exists. And over the year, uh, taken from the Blue Book data, 2000, decade 2006 to 2016, we are doing more first-time aortic valves. These are in higher-risk patients. Um, as seen here, the predicted mortality based on logistic Euroscore over this decade has gone up, but the actual mortality seen has, has gone down. So we're quite good at doing this operation. The background now on the durability of these procedures. So these are for AVR. Uh, there's a number of papers out there. These have just been picked up. Um, and as you can see, the number of patients is significant. And the duration that we're looking at here is out 20 years. Just highlighting the topic of this talk, structural valve deterioration. So freedom from structural valve deterioration out at 20 years, 60, uh, a mean of 60%, uh, 80%, 95% at 15 years. So these, this is good data for structural valve deterioration out to long, long time big patient numbers. Just highlighting two papers, however, not all bioprosthetic Valves are the same. Bourguignon's paper, as we all know, uh, looked at a large group of patients 20 years out uh, for Carpentier Edwards Perimount Mag Magnaries now, but originally started with Perimount valves. And these, this has highlighted that essentially for the whole cohort, 19.7 years was the valve durability. Senage's group looked at the mitrophobe prothoprosthesis, and the highlighted uh, incidence here was that small prostheses had a bad outcome with a, a high mortality rate at five years reported. TAVI in the UK. 
It's quite a scary graph, but essentially this is taken from the NICOR British Cardiac Society data set uh, from 2007 to 17. It is exponential. There's no two ways about it. They're also changing the way they're doing TAVI in that time period. GA case or non-GA cases making up a tiny proportion now making up 80% of cases. So they can do four or five TAVI cases in a day, three lists a week. The numbers stack. Here for pop complications, these are absolute. There's no risk, there's no risk adjustment in TAVI. TAVI is absolute. It's black or white. Um, essentially, their stroke rate still fell significantly higher than following surgery. And the hospital mortality has come down, but it's nowhere near the hospital mortality of a post-surgical uh, AVR. Just looking now at TAVI procedures that have been documented in the data set there, just for the last four year, five years, we've got an increase. It's not exponential, but there's a notable increase trend on TAVI valve in valve procedures in the UK. What's the durability on TAVI? Well, TAVI... The data's not there to the same degree. We're looking at five-year data. And just to say that these valves, who are, which are supposed to be you know, the be-all and end-all, do degenerate as well. And that's been shown at five years. Definition of what we're looking at, though, in, in structural valve deterioration, it is the valve prosthesis itself deteriorating, not non-structural deterioration, which means uh, patient prosthetic mismatch, paraphasmal leak, thrombosis or endocarditis. And it's important to know this definition because you've got to be comparing like with like and you've got to scrutinise the papers with regards to what they are actually looking at when they're talking about operations for these patients or TAVI valve in valve because, quite frankly, there isn't an option. TAVI valve in valve doesn't work for any of these three. So we've still got to do redo aortic valve. This, this is, however, what we're talking about. This is, the, this is the, 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 the problem that is competing between TAVI valve and valve versus redo aortic surgery. There is actually a breakdown of, ty the, of type of structural valve based on the hemodynamics that it causes. So regurgitant uh, degeneration tends to occur because of flail or wear and tear in the cusps. And these tend to occur in the bigger valve prosthesis, stenosis type in the smaller valve prosthesis. And we, took, we heard this morning about pressure gradients being a, a key. In fact, this is the definition, and this has been published in the paper in 2017. Redo AVR mortality. I just want to, I mean, you can read that slide, but essentially these, these two papers just highlight that the redo AVR rate, 30-day uh, mortality, 2.5, five-year survival of 83%. There are risks, though, and these are the patients that we have to be a bit worried about with regards to operative risks, but it's not unsurmountable. Morbidity should be considered, and the thing about these patients is that they require additional preoperative workup. We need to talk to them about bleeding risk. We need to talk to them about uh, postoperative pacemaker risk, but essentially we've done that all the way through our surgical careers. However, TAVI valve in valve, is there, is there data out there? Well, we have got some data, one-year data. Mortality rate, 7.6. Remember what it was, 2.5 and 16.8 at one year, and they have large gradients following their TAVI valve in valve, particularly in the smaller prostheses. So small caliber prostheses, if they've had to use a transapical approach, and if they have a high STS score, these are bad patients for TAVI valve in valve. Again, registry data. This is all registry data, uh, only out to one year, and the same thing, high gradients, increased mortality at one year. So worse for smaller valve in valve number of patients, a number of papers again, Egbrecht, Dan Piberos, both, both basically showing that a significant increase in mortality rate at 30 days and 1.8 if you've got smaller intrinsic valves. Just to say, is this the right thing to do for patients? Is the Russian doll system, once you've put one TAVI valve in valve, are you going to do another TAVI valve in valve? How long do these valves survive in their... In the, the, in the position that they weren't actually designed for when the manufacturer first created these valves? And should we be thinking that a pressure-overloaded, hypertrophied uh, left ventricle doesn't necessarily show a drop in ejection fraction but will result in heart failure if you put in a valve that doesn't drop their gradient after the procedure? So therefore, should these patients with small aortic dimensions automatically just have redo aortic valve? Um, 
a comparison? Is there a comparison? Is there evidence? As we heard this morning, uh, there are some papers out there. Three of them are retrospective evidence. One is a meta-analysis meta looking at five observational studies. So that's not hard and fast evidence by any stretch of the imagination. The, the conclusion of this meta-analysis uh, here was basically that there was no statistical, statistical significance and there wasn't an inferiority with regards to doing redo aortic valve surgery. Well, we know that. What we should be questioning was whether we should be doing this in the first place, the TAVI valve in valve. However, let's look at it from a guidelines basis. There is no real guidelines for this. The guidelines are for first-time implants. In the most recent European and American guidelines, we're looking at this shift again to lower ages being a cutoff for when you put in a biological valve, 50 years considered for American guidelines. So recommendations. It's got to be a heart team approach. I've been a bit flippant about Tavi valve in valve. It does have a place. However, the team has to be educated and it needs to be a facilitated decision making that's shared. Um, and therefore, patients will be selected appropriately and there'll be an improved referring process for treatment of these complicated patients. We have to think about the choice of treatments uh, and the teams that are making those decisions have to be expert at offering both, both uh, interventions. And we have to therefore caution a department that is really focused on TAVI because there intrinsically will be a drive to perform more and more TAVI valve in valve in potentially lower intermediate risk patients. So who makes up the heart team? We've seen this before. This has been nicely covered by a, a, an article that I'd recommend you to read. Uh, it's a, a review article. Uh, in, a, in essence, multiple people in the, t in the room. And what we lack potentially is the anaesthetist and the the overse overseer to, to govern whether these patients really are suitable to have an intervention because they don't all need to have an intervention. Uh, recommendation two, we've got to do, think of these two strategies as complementary, not competing. And there will be an algorithm that's been suggested that could be applied to them. And basically, type of prosthesis failure, as I've mentioned, is important to consider to really work out what has happened to the valve, the age and their comorbidities, in particularly LV function and New York Heart Association 3 and 4, uh, COPD and acute renal problems, operative risk and anatomical features that are preventative for um, TAVI. Um, and also anticipated risks of each alternative. And patient choice has got to come into that. And the, and the heart team has to provide this informed consent, talking about the lack of long-term follow-up after this, uh, this procedure. So this is the algorithm that was pr uh, pr uh, proposed in that paper. Essentially, define your valve degeneration. If it is severe structural valve deterioration, look at the risks with the heart team. Look at the patient's choice what the problems are, if your patient's young, if there's intrinsically a small aortic prosthesis in there at the time, less than 21%, uh, less than 21 millimetres, then we should think about operation, unless there is significant operative risk, and then they're in this category where there has to be a conflab. And elderly patients with contraindications, such as uh, a, a, a permeable meaning, I, I guess that's a lemur crossing the, uh, uh, the midline, hostile thorax or porcelain aorta, these are then shifted towards TAVI. Recommendation three, thorough workup has to be there for these patients. CT is key. You've got to go through all of this, then you've got to think about, particularly for the TAVI, the prosthesis type that's originally in there. It doesn't really matter for surgery because we're going to take it out, but for TAVI, uh, valve in valve, it does make a difference. And this app that I'm sure you're all aware of, uh, Vinnie Bapat has created, it's very user-friendly. Uh, cardiologists can plug in and uh, anything, and it basically it will spit out all the different type of biological prosthesis, that, what they look like, because not everybody knows what they look like, and what they look like when they're in the cath lab. So... This is a, a valve that <laughs> appears in Leeds a lot. Uh, it's a radio, radio lucent valve. It's, it was made, it doesn't, it's not made anymore. The Aspire, com uh, the Vasquez company up in Leeds used to make this valve. But there are some more TAVI valve in valve friendly, friendly options there. So, special anatomical considerations for TAVI valve in valve. As I said, smaller aortic valve they should probably have redo surgery because of this idea of putting in a small prosthesis 
However, cardiologists, bless them, fracture the stent, pre-dilate with a non-compliant balloon. Then we can put in a bigger uh, valve, in, valve in valve or seat the valve higher up in a superannular position, i.e. pushing the boundaries. Risk of coronary obstruction. So there's that CT scanning, as I say, to plan where your coronaries are in relation to the valve prosthesis. If it's, if it's going to be high, redo surgery. No. Look, Tavi valve in valve surgery uh, strategy. Put a gu guide wire in to enable quick stent deployment. Balloon valvu uh, valvuloplasty to see then coronary injection. Will the valve leaflets obst obstruct the coronary? Let's even try chimney stenting. Put a stent into the coronary, undeployed, so you can quickly deploy it if they get obstructed. Or this. The basilica. The basilica. Is this a step too far? First in man, 2017. Uh, now 100 cases in the following 18 months. Basically, electrocautery to rip open the existing prosthesis to enable implantation. However, recommendation seven, don't forget your patient is the reason why you're there, and that's part of the decision-making. Is it ethically right to keep saying to patients, you can have this biological valve, it will avoid all all horrible things to do with warfarin and look we've got a valve that can open to enable the TAVI valve in valve imagine he, he's 30 how long is that valve going to last 40 maybe a TAVI valve in valve at 40 maybe another TAVI valve at valve at 45 52 boomerang effect Russian doll whatever you want to call it we've got to question that we have to inform our patients fully redo AVR should still be the default and is preferable particularly in this group However, there is this out there, and it is an excellent alternative in high-risk patients. Uh, rationale for the default is, as I've said, superior hemodynamics with redo surgery. Mortality rates are appropriate and, and in fact, lower. Uh, and the heart team is crucial to avoid, uh, avoid competitive approach. It's complementary. And there has to be randomized control trials before this is moved into smaller, low-risk categories of patients. Thank you.